Hi there. I hope you're doing well in whichever part of the world you are in. Today's video we'll be painting autumn leaves in watercolors and whilst we paint I'll give you some tips on seeking inspiration and on using reference photos. I'm painting in my Hannah Mule sketchbook which is made from 90% bamboo fiber and 10% rag. The colors that I'm using for this painting are Vincent Newton watercolors. Vincent light yellow, alizarin crimson, sap green, burnt sienna and opera rose. I use two bowls of water, one for dipping the dirty brushes in and one for applying clean water on the page. Most of this painting is a wet on wet technique that is first applying water to the page and then painting on it. I'll put a list of all the supplies that I use in this video in the description box below. We've just finished with autumn in New Zealand and whilst I was on my walk some time back, I saw these beautiful leaves lying around. So I picked them up and thought about doing a video on them. You're more than welcome to use this as your reference if you'd like, otherwise you could use any other leaves as your inspiration. This video is on time lapse. If you wish to slow the pace, please click on the video and then click on the three right buttons at the top right corner. You can then click on whichever preference you'd like to watch it on. If you're visiting my channel for the first time, a big thank you and a warm welcome. I hope you enjoy this video and if you like it, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell button to get future notifications of the videos that I put up. I usually put up one video every week, but sometimes I try to put up more than one. And though I make art videos mainly, I also recite poems and I've started a new travels vlog, so I hope you enjoy the mix. And to those returning to my channel, thank you so much for your support and I hope you're enjoying my videos so far. What I've done is I first outlined the leaves um, in pencil on the paper and then I started uh, applying the colors. In the first leaf, which is d below the one that I'm painting on, I've used lemon yellow first and then alizarin crimson. Whereas I take a little darker mix, it's the same uh, combination, but uh, yellow and uh, more of alizarin mix and a little bit of burnt sienna. So how do I look for inspiration? I find inspiration in many things, in the form of nature when I go for my walks, that little stream, the colors of leaves, the colors of beautiful flowers, the different trees. We have such beautiful green shades of trees here in New Zealand. A billboard, a cat coming to the fence as I walk by, a uniquely shaped tree or branch of a tree. Inspiration is in abundance. We only have to look around. And having a phone on hand during walks helps to take pictures and use that as inspiration. What other ways do I find my inspiration from? Well, I'm a poet too. So many a times I find inspiration from my poetry and vice versa. I find inspiration from my art to write a poem. If you go to my Instagram page at brainrose.art last year, October and December, I have mostly all my posts with a poem on my artworks or a short story. I also find inspiration from different artists who I look up to. I go to their Instagram page or their YouTube videos and love to see the colors they use, the process they go through and the tools that they use and I write down things. If there's a particular work of theirs that I like, I drag it onto an inspiration wall and I study what they do. I go through magazines for color schemes through, especially home or garden magazines. Here you find experts matching up or contrasting color schemes. Even property magazines have a lot of inspirational designs in them. Going back to my painting, I am using alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna and black to the mix. And um, just uh, on the leaves, how it appears, I'm trying to get those tones of colors onto the paper. I love to visit art galleries and art fairs where I pick up a lot of inspiration from. And I also love to support local artists. For example, I recently went to a local art fair and I bought this beautiful creation from one of the artists. The colors make me so happy. 
and I have an artwork of mine right above my desk with colors similar to this piece and they go get on so well. Talking about this painting, it is a semi-abstract oil painting but every time I look at it I'm inspired with so many things. I wouldn't be able to make another one of this because it's a sheer dance and fusion of oil paints with different tools. It's priceless to me and I wouldn't be able to part with it because it fills me up with joy, color and inspiration. Just going back to the page, I put the leaves onto the page and try to follow the shape and the pattern of it. Next is using references. Like I mentioned before, I click a lot of photos and mostly use them for my references. Unless I'm doing a study of some drawing and something that I want to learn from another artist. And for those instances, I sketch or paint in my sketchbooks. Many artists while making videos on YouTube offer you to use their reference just as I have done for this video. But uh, when I follow another artist's painting, I try to defer my painting. I do follow their process, but I still differ in what I paint. For example, if they draw and paint a dog, I draw and paint something else, a different animal, but use the similar technique. Before doing that, I look for a lot of references on Pixabay and Pexels. And though I don't copy it, I just take it onto my mood board and um, research it and then because the thing is that the more you look at things the more you see things differently and then i write down what i can use how i can use similar techniques on different things for example i've shown you the process and watercolor technique to draw leaves research some other leaves or flowers do your own composition and then paint with me but at the same time you're doing your own your own work I feel I learn better that way rather than just following someone's art. I first look at the whole video, then I contemplate on what I could use similar techniques and then again put the video on and paint alongside. You'll not believe if I tell you that's how I learn to do my own techniques and I put my own flair to things. And the end results look nowhere than that what I was following. I encourage you to draw and paint this way. And I can assure you, you learn more than you can imagine. The next step I can give you is to challenge yourself to think differently. If you follow someone and accomplish a particular skill or technique from them, put a twist to it. In my case, I paint abstracts or semi-abstracts. I take all the skills I learned in mixed media and apply a few on a new composition of abstract painting. For example, the addition and subtraction of colors that you go about doing in watercolors, you can use the same technique in oil paintings or in collages. So train yourself to think differently. If you stretch your imagination, believe me, you'll surprise yourself. I surprise myself all the time and you bet I'm so pleased with the results. You could use copyright free images from Pixabay or Pexels websites and um, the other alternative is just use your own photos or learn to draw from still life objects around you or from nature. There are many legal implications for copying art. I'm not a legal expert, but I'm telling you what I know and what I understand. So please use your discretion whenever using any reference photos from somewhere else. From here on, I do quite a few layers more, adding on more colors and adding vibrancy to the painting. And um, I hope you can reach to a point where you feel you are happy with it and then stop doing it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I hope that you do. And um, I'll be posting new videos very soon. I thank you once again for watching this video. And I hope it helps you in being inspired and observing things around you for references. I also hope you enjoyed this painting. Take care and see you soon in my next video.